This video will discuss the half-life of reactants in chemical kinetics. So the half-life in kinetics is the time required to go from some initial concentration of a reactant to half of that concentration. So we're going to calculate here what the half-life of reactants are for various orders of reaction, first order, second order, and zero order. All right, for first order reactions, our integrated rate law says that A of T, which in, in a half-life is gonna be one half of A naught, A of T equals A naught times E to the minus KT. So we're gonna see what time it takes to go to one half of A naught. All right, so divide both sides by A naught, we have one half equals E to the minus KT. Take the natural log of both sides. We have the natural log of one half which is the minus natural log of two. Natural log of one over x is minus natural log of x. So minus natural log of two equals minus kt. Log of e to the minus kt is minus kt. So solving for uh, t, we have these minus signs cancel. So we get the half-life is the natural log of two divided by the rate constant. So the natural log of two is approximately 0 0.693. So what this says is that the first order half-life is independent of the concentration of the substance. So if we have a substance which is an initial concentration of one molar it, and it has a rate constant of, let's say, one, then it's going to take 0 0.693 seconds to consume half of that. If its concentration is 0.2, it's still going to take 0 0.693 seconds. Um, if, it's, if its concentration is 10 or 100 or a, th or a thousand or one million times bigger or smaller than the initial concentration, it doesn't matter. As long as it obeys this rate law, the half-life is independent of concentration for our first order reactions. All right, for second order reactions, our integrated rate law is that one over A of T equals one over A naught plus KT or we can substitute in for A of T, uh, one over one half A naught for uh, whatever our half-life time is going to be. So one over one half A naught is two over A naught. So we have two over A naught equals one over A naught plus KT. Subtract this one over A naught to the other side. Two over A naught minus one over A naught equals one over A naught, which equals KT. So our half-life for a second order reaction is one over the rate constant times the initial concentration. So for our second order, uh, for our second order half-life, the half-life depends on the initial concentration. The more initial concentration we have, the bigger square of our uh, concentration we have, and the faster we're going to decrease the, that concentration. So it gets harder and harder for the reaction to proceed as the, as the concentration goes down. It takes longer and longer to consume half of what remains as time goes on. So for a, for a reaction which is second order, the half-life is going to increase over time for a, for a reaction, whereas for a first order reaction, the half-life stays the same regardless as our uh, concentration of our reactant decreases. All right, for zero order reactions, we actually haven't developed our integrated rate law yet, so let's go ahead and do that. We have V of T equals K times A of T to the zero power, so the reaction rate is just equal to K, and that's equal to minus DA DT. So separating out things on different sides, we just have the integral from zero to T of minus K DT is equal to the integral from A naught to A of T of D A of T. So minus KT over here equals A of T minus A naught. So our concentration as a function of time is equal to the initial concentration minus the rate constant times time. So for the half-life, our concentration at that time is gonna equal one half the initial concentration, as we've been saying. So we have one half a naught equals a naught minus kt. Subtract a naught from both sides. Minus one half a naught equals minus kt. Cancel out the minus signs. We have one half a naught equals kt. 
divide both sides by k, we have that the zero order half-life is equal to the concentration divided by 2 times the rate constant. So here, the, the concentration of our reactant is just decreasing linearly over time. So the more reactant we have, the longer it takes to consume half of it. So whatever time it takes to consume half of our initial reactant, once we get down to half of our initial concentration, consuming half of that takes only half as long. Then consuming half of one-fourth of that takes one-fourth as long. So the half-life is directly proportional to our concentration of whatever reactant of interest we have. So the half-life is decreasing over time. Half of our reactant is going away faster and faster over time for a zero-order reaction. All right, so at the bottom here, I've got substituted in what the half-life of a reaction of various orders is. If I have a rate constant which is equal to 1 and an initial concentration of 1 molar for each of them. Now you can't compare directly apples to apples here because these rate constants have different units. For zero order it's molar per second, for first order it's per second, and for second order it's per molar per second. So these aren't really the same units, but we're just going to compare qualitatively how the times change relative to one another as we proceed. All right, so I have here the half-life, the time relative to go to from the initial concentration to one half a naught. Then I have plotted what I'm calling the quarter life, time to go from a naught to one fourth a naught. Then the eighth life, time to go from a naught to one eighth a naught, etc., etc. So for a zero order reaction, our concentration is decreasing linearly over time. So it takes half a second to go from zero from a naught to one half a naught. Takes 0.75 seconds, so our second half life was twice as fast as our first one. 0.75 minus 0.5 is 0.25, going from a quarter to a half. Going from a half to an eighth was even faster, 0.13 seconds. So we'll see that that just keeps going until at one second there's no reactant left. For a first order reaction with K equals 1 and initial concentration of 1 molar, at 0.69 seconds we've consumed half of our reactants. To consume half of what remains, it takes another 0.69 seconds, 1.38 seconds, to get to the quarter time. To consume half of what's left there is another 0.69 seconds, and that will continue forever there. The half-life is independent of the concentration of our reactant. And for a second-order reaction, we have our first half-life, so we have 1 over, yeah, there we have, 1 over k times a naught. So to consume half of our reactant takes one second. To consume half of what remains takes another two seconds. To consume half of the quarter that remains, it takes another four seconds. So there we see our half-life increasing with time as our concentration goes down. So those are the varying kinds of behaviors you expect with different orders of reaction. First order, half-life independent of time. Zero order, half-life decreasing with time. And second order, half-life increasing with time as our reactants go away.